Hello everybody, I hope wherever you are, you are doing well. So we're going to talk about interpreting correlations today. Um, so we're going to uh, be aware of um, some, some cautions when we look at correlations, especially how outliers can really uh, play havoc on some things. So uh, most importantly, we're going to learn that correlation and causation are separate concepts. So, if you calculate the correlation coefficient for the data in this figure, we're going to get an R value of 0.88, which normally we know that that's a very strong positive correlation. But then when you look at the actual uh, data, uh, you see we've got an outlier. And um, what I want you to think about is if we were to take that outlier away, our R value would be zero because um, if you remove that um, that point that's way off up there, you're going to see that you can draw a positive line, a negative line, you can draw whatever you want. So um, we have to be careful about outliers because they can change things. Okay, uh, grouping data is another thing that can um, play an effect. So for example, um, we have hours worked per TV, uh, I, I said worked, hours watched per week of TV and GPA. Um, and um, if we uh, were to um, do a, a correlation uh, coefficient, um, we would get some interesting results. Um, when we plot the data, we, it looks like there's just no correlation whatsoever between GPA and hours of TV watched every week. Um, as a matter of fact, if you were to just uh, do a, the math on that, what we would find is a negative 0 0.063, which is a very, very low, very, very close to zero, so no correlation whatsoever. However, um, if we look at what kind of TV we're talking about, and we realize that there are two groups, one that watches educational programs and one that just watches plain old regular TV, so in other words, educational programs like maybe they're watching, uh, you know, National Geographic, The Incredible Dr. Pole, and then the other folks are watching The Simpsons, uh, then um, we have two distinct groups of television. And when we break them down into those two groups, um, and we discover that the uh, folks who are watching the educational have a, an R of 0.855, which is strong positive, and the folks who are watching regular TV have a negative 0.95, we see that the more educational programming you watch, the higher the GPA. The more regular TV you watch, the lower the GPA. Notice that there's not a, a causal claim here. We're not saying that the TV is causing the bad GPA. We're just saying that there's a correlation, that the more the student, the type of student who's more likely to spend several hours watching educational is more likely to have a higher GPA the student who is more likely to watch 20, 25 hours of regular TV a week is more likely to have a lower GPA. That's the correlation, not, not a cause. Okay, and um, we also get um, something, I like to call it uh, clustering um, of data, but um, we have uh, we have little subgroups. And so if you were to uh, try to draw a line, you might get a really strong positive correlation here, but, but notice really you've just got two little clumps of data here. So you can't really say that there's a, a linear relationship here. The math might give you a high R, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to draw a, uh, a line here. The important thing that is here is that there's a massive gap in the data between 2,000 and um, a little over 3,000 pounds. There's a huge gap where there's just no data points at all. And then, yeah, their, their point here is that the data says as a whole, you may have a strong correlation, but there's not correlation within each cluster. If you were to take those separately, there wouldn't be a line you could draw. They're just grouped around uh, little tiny pockets. Finally, correlation does not imply causality. Uh, those are extremely important concepts to keep uh, separate. A lot of really intelligent people get those confused. Just because there's a relationship doesn't mean that one is causing the other. There could be some underlying cause that's explaining both. So the correlation may be a coincidence. 
Both correlation variables may be directly influenced by some common underlying cause. To me, the uh, a good example might be that TV example we talked about a few moments ago. The type of student who is interested in watching educational TV may just be interested in learning, so naturally their GPA is going to be um, higher. That doesn't mean the TV causes the GPA or the GPA causes them to watch more TV. There's some other latent variable that is influencing both of them, so there's a common underlying cause. And then one of the correlated variables may actually be the cause of the other, so there might actually be a causal relationship. But um, remember that things are complex, people are soup, there may be several causes. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and we were trying to figure out why there was a delay in this email. We've been waiting on it for over a month and it finally came and we were speculating. And I said, and of course it could be that all of these things are an impact or a factor of why this email was so late. So there are sometimes many causes to a single event that you witness. Um, useful interpretations of correlation. Um, you know, certainly uh, correlations can lead to wrong interpretations. Um, there's also, um, out, you know, in addition to outliners, uh, outliers, you can also have people who tend to fish for correlations or people who are looking for a certain relationship. And so, you, you, you know, you get a confirmation bias sometimes where you're expecting to find something. But there are correct interpretations as well. And so, uh, meteorology, medical research, business is a really good example, um, economics, especially macroeconomics, research and marketing and advertising, psychology and computer science, all of those uh, are fields where correlation can help us make decisions about probable outcomes. If we recognize that there's a correlation between two things and one of them is easy to predict and the other one is difficult to predict, but we know there's a strong correlation, then we'll look at the thing that's easy to predict so that we can help make decisions about things that are difficult to predict. So that's it for this uh, particular section. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to shoot me an email. Hope wherever you are, you're doing well.